There are some hideous managers out there. We've worked together for so many years, and I know from many conversations with you that staffing at Molly, Molly and Cove has always been front and centre for you um, and of the way you think. When did you realise that your staff are the most important asset that you have? I, quite early on, I think, in, in, my, in my management career, even before you know being at Molly and you know, we we want to offer the best experience that we can for our guests. You know that that generates repeat business and that gets people coming back and that's what that's what we're about i can't do this job without people you know i, I can't i can't do my job i can't talk, sit here and, and talk to you i can't talk to my guests in the evening we've got to have people and as i've gone through my career i think about 15 16 18 years i've witnessed in other kitchens in other places chefs talking to commies like a piece of you know muck on, the, on their shoe or thrones of it or that bullying and, and and that doesn't work we've got a fantastic culture here at Mullion I've got an open door policy if we get anybody in here who doesn't want to doesn't want to grow in the culture that we've that we've created we move that person on quite quickly one bad apple spoils the cart and I'm a really quite laid back, friendly guy. My deputies, you know, we've arrived at my deputy has been with me for five years here and two years at my previous property. We work quite well together and that's the, and that's the culture. And we want people to come to work and deliver a top notch, top notch service, which is what they do. I guess of you, as you know, are, are, are great. Our trip advisors are great. And, and all it does is talk about the staff. But, you have to nurture that. You have to nurture that culture, and and, and that's what we, that's, and that's what we do. We talk, to, we treat people like people. They're, yeah. they're not numbers. Then they're not a, another payroll number. You know, I've got 50, 50 members of staff approximately now, and I can tell you their their partner's name, their kid's name, the name of the horse, the name of the dog. You know what they do because you've got to talk to these people, and and if you're leading them and you're interested in their life, it's so much easier to get the best out of people and, and that's kind of, that's the way we do it here and during during covid lockdowns that was difficult like so i'm quite a sociable person You've got people that can't come to work and we did all the you know the zoom quizzes we did the you know basically keeping in touch with people and and, and trying to let the team know that we're that, that, that we're still here and then when we were able to we were doing yoga classes i've got some great pictures i'll share with you and you know we got a yoga, yoga lady came in and we did a dance class with them we did a and then afterwards chef you know made pizzas in the pizza oven then the second time we reopened we did a, a barbecue for the new summer staff coming in so we it is just about getting these people and, and, and being like a little family and i know it sounds really cliche but it is. That's that's just it's just the way it's been is here. Yeah, and I th I think that's lovely. And I mean, I I see your feedback coming back from your guests and your staff are always mentioned. Um, you know, in in really high regard. So I think the way management do deal with their staff has a big impact on how the staff deal with um the guests. You know, if you work together, you get the dream team, right? But yeah. you, you know, Valley and Cove is really. It's not city centre, it's right there out in the sticks, right? So how do you go about finding that talented staff, you know? Because there's so many short shortages within the hospitality in industry in itself, let alone getting them out in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> so what's yes. your advice there? <laughs> it is, it's, been, it's been tough and our attention is, is, is high. You know, it wasn't that long ago we, we you know, we won the Springboard Award for staff retention for, for what we do to keep the, the meals. Well, if you've got somebody who's doing the job, look, my um, reception manager should be here 26 years. You know, we've got a girl in the, in the restaurant that's been here for 24 years. My spa manager, um, she's here since the opening of the spa, so 2019. My deputy's been with me for six years on and off. The housekeeping manager's been here for three years. Once we've got that person here, because of the culture and the way we operate, people do stay. So it's not as if we're churning through staff. Where we, we struggle to find stuff is because of our seasonality, is trying to find, and Brexit saw to this, you know, the seasonal staff that either 
foreign staff abroad that came over and, and you know, were in a break at university, you know, that was open for them to do. They can come here, they work three months, go back to, and we had a couple like that, that we, we had four years in a row. We only trained them the first year, well, and they just stepped straight back into it, you know, for years two, three, and four. That's, that's gone, you know. So trying to find local people has been, has been quite difficult. But we, we, we do manage it. We've got staff accommodation. We try and like say, keep nurturing that great culture that we have, that people are, are, are working together as one. But at the end of the day, we just want to serve the amazing food that Chef and his team have spent all day preparing to the guests in the most efficient way. You know, yeah. we're all on this journey together of take this amazing food, deliver it to the guests, get that great feedback. They pay the bills and, 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 and you know, and it, they get you. And, it, and it's a cycle, right? The hotel does well, the staff do well, you know, and, and then it becomes more of a lifestyle than a job. And I think yeah. in, in hospitality, it really has to be a lifestyle that you want because of the demanding hours. And sometimes, you know, like if you're in housekeeping, it can be a really thankless task because nobody really sees that effort behind the scenes. So it's really nice to see and understand how your team works. Um, I know you did a t- talent development program a few years ago. Do you want to tell, has that helped you with, with staffing? I think the, the talent development program, I did that at Cranfield University, and that was I think, more about myself uh, and, and realising what kind of manager and what kind of person that I, that I want to be. You know, there are some hideous managers out there and I've worked for some and I've had some fantastic managers and you know and and and, and it's trying to work out who you want to be and, and and work out you know if I'm if I can be the best I could be and I can lead people people are going to follow me and that's how we're going to be successful you know shouting and swearing and that that or you know being that really awful manager that's that's why you don't get staff retention. So at the Crownfield, it was all about developing myself and, and, and who I wanted to be and how I wanted to be seen and and and, and how people can, you know, how I can then take people on also and, and how I can then develop them. So not so much as it helps with that issue of staffing and where to staff find where to find staff from, but more of the hey, once I've got those staff, how can I how can I develop them? 